Activist and advocate Ray Hill has been no stranger to the spotlight since he came storming out of the closet way back in 1959. But in the years following a horrific gay bashing murder in his beloved Houston, Texas, this self-proclaimed citizen provocateur took up a highly unlikely cause and in the process upset those you'd think he'd most want to protect. Correspondent Rachel Maddow, also of Air America Radio, tells us the story of Ray Hill, the controversial man behind the mic. They can lock me away from the warm light of day. I just want to hear your sweet voice. Well, lo and behold, it's high time for you fellas to holler down the pipe chase and rattle them bars. Ray Hill is a mentor, a genius in some ways, and my friend. He's the wisest man in the world. He's the most cocky man in the world. Can I describe Ray Hill to you? If I were 61 years old again, I would throw my Viagra <laughs> away. Goodness gracious, you did ask a big one there. <laughs> Sent to prison in the early 70s for a string of robberies, Ray Hill is a thief, a recovering alcoholic, an ex-con, and for two or three hours a week for the past 26 years, He's a radio talk show host on KPFT FM, broadcasting from the heart of Houston, Texas. Sierra, it's your turn. Hi, baby. But Ray's radio show brings new meaning to the term captive audience. I want to talk to my husband. He's at the Huntsville unit. Butch, you're on the air. I hope you get out soon. That's because Ray Hill is the founder, producer, and host of The Prison Show, a unique radio chat fest dedicated to the incarcerated and those who love them. While the show's first hour addresses prison issues, it's the second hour when family members call in to speak directly to prisoners listening in their cells when the magic really happens. I want to say hello to my baby, Frederick Johnson. I am so overdue for some you. Some prisoners have even exchanged vows on Ray's show. Ronnie was listening to the show, and when Judge Gorzinski said, repeat after me, Ronnie repeated after him his vows in his cell. But there's something even more unique about this man who has dedicated so much of his life to prisoners' rights. Ray is gay. No, it doesn't bother me that Ray is gay. Ray is flaming gay. And I love every inch of him. In fact, Ray Hill is one of Houston's pioneering LGBT activists. I'm a lesbian, and because of Ray, my life today is easier and safer and freer than it would have been in the city without him. Ray has been involved in virtually every aspect of Houston's gay and lesbian movement for the past 40 years, and he's the first to tell you. The Houston Human Rights League, AIDS Foundation Houston, Gay and Lesbian Transgendered Community Center, Houston Gay, Lesbian, Trans... He started, really, the movement. He started it before there even was a movement. Some people say I brag about my achievements a little bit much, but I enjoy the expression on people's faces as I uh, say that queers can make a difference and ex-convicts can make a difference because that's two classes of devalued people to which there is absolutely no doubt that I carry full credentials. And having one foot planted firmly in both the gay and prison communities has presented Ray Hill with what some see as a moral contradiction and perhaps the biggest controversy in his long, rabble-rousing career. The year was 1991 the early morning hours of July 4th. 27-year-old Paul Broussard and two of his friends were walking back to their car, having just left a gay nightclub in the Montrose area of Houston. At the same time, two cars were circling that neighborhood. Inside, 10 young men hopped up on beer, marijuana, and LSD. As they cruised the streets, they taunted gay revelers out for a night on the town. It was a fateful intersection when the group came upon Paul and his friends asking this question, do you know where heaven is? Referring to the gay club Paul and his friends had just left. Of course, they did. The 10 young men sprang from their cars and gave chase. The only way you really want to describe is, it's like when you watch the animal shows, it's like a pack of lions on gazelles. Paul's two companions were assaulted but managed to get away. Paul did not. They beat them with boards, they beat them with their, they had steel-toed boots, they were kicking them, punching them, knocking them down. 
One of the young men, 17-year-old John Bice, pulled out a knife. He stabbed Paul Broussard twice. If it wasn't for John Bice and the knife, I mean, Paul would have had numerous injuries, but more than likely he would have survived. Houston in 1991 was a city plagued by crime. The Montrose section was particularly troublesome. Many felt authorities were ignoring the plight of the gay community. And I said, you mean to tell me that this is yet another gay bash homicide that is not going to get investigated and not going to get solved? And they said, well, Mr. We'd, we'd like to investigate it, but there's nothing. This case is not going to get solved. And I said, yes, as a matter of fact, it is going to get solved. Nothing would have happened with, with that murder as far as the media was concerned without Ray's involvement. Ray uh, attracted uh, doing what Ray does best, and that is attract media attention. Hate crimes are hate crimes. Amidst intense media scrutiny, the case was solved just two weeks after the attack, when a tip led to the arrest of one of the assailants. In a matter of days, the others followed. All 10 attended the same high school, located in an upper-class neighborhood of Houston called the Woodlands. The case attracted national attention. Before there was Matthew Shepard, before there was James Byrd Jr., there was Paul Broussard. In the year and a half following the murder, all of the Woodlands 10, as the young men came to be known, were sentenced. The teenager who inflicted the fatal wounds received a lengthy jail term. John Bice the one that possessed the weapon, the tool that was used to kill Paul, received uh, the ultimate punishment, and that was 45 years. Ray Hill, the gay activist who had focused so much energy on bringing Paul Broussard's killers to justice, had gotten what he wanted. Or had he? 17-year-old kid, 45 years, I said, this is way beyond reason. Ray Hill, the prisoner's rights advocate, went back to work. I put it out on the radio. I want this fellow John Bice to write me. Listeners of the show that were on the unit where John was told John that they, a friend of theirs wanted him to write him. Well, who is that? And it's Ray Hill. And John Bice said, basically, I mean, this guy sent me to prison. I mean, why would I want to write that? I picked up a pen and I wrote Ray. And I'm still remembering, probably still has the letter to this day. Ray, what do you want? What do you want? I'm here in prison. I'm 18 years old, and the, the response I got back was, you know, you may hate me, basically. All right? He says, but you're one of mine. The assailants that killed Paul Broussard needed to be identified. They needed to be prosecuted according to the law. But after that is done, they need to be understood, forgiven, and reinstituted in society. That's called reconciliation, and I believe in that. Going through the wheels of the justice system, nobody ever got to know who we were. We were just a whole bunch of kids, a whole bunch of thugs that committed this horrible crime. And Ray wanted to know who the kid really was. We got to uh, talking about how to do time and how to best do time and what to do about education. And, and our friendship grew. Both in letters and during regular visits, Ray, an ex-con himself, counsels John about gangs, about life in prison, and about grief. Knowing that you've committed a crime and taken a man's life, something that you can never give back, all right? Every day, you wake up and feel this, this loss. It's hard to put into words. Nancy Rodriguez, the mother of John's victim, attempted to put her loss into words in this public service announcement. My son Paul was brutally murdered. The FBI said it was a gay bashing. After the murder of her son 15 years ago, Nancy had direct input in the sentencing of her son's killers, including John Bice, who years later would write to the grieving mother. I wanted to reach out, and if there was any kind of forgiveness, find it. Nancy, who declined our request for an interview, has vowed to live long enough to make sure those responsible for her son's death remain behind bars. She chose not to respond to John's letter, a letter also addressed to the gay and lesbian community, a letter that Ray Hill read aloud on his radio show. 
The gay and lesbian community of Houston, I owe a momentous apology. Paul Broussard's mother has stated publicly her dislike of Ray Hill, and she's not alone, especially in light of Ray's latest revelation. He was called a traitor by the, to the gay community, um, a hypocrite. Now 66, Ray Hill is getting on in years, and he's thinking about hanging up his headphones. Just not yet. Uh, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you, son. That's because his chosen successor is still in prison. He said, John, he says, don't you know what I'm doing? And I, I was like, well, what do you mean, Ray? And he's like, he's like, don't you know that you have to get out of prison to take over the radio show? And I went, take over the radio show? And he went, yeah. I will gladly push my way away from that microphone and walk out of the room when John is ready to take it over. Andy Kahn, an advocate for many years now to Nancy Rodriguez, questions Ray's motives. I mean, why would you pick John Bice of 145,000 prison inmates and other inmates that Ray's helped? From our perspective, he's looking for attention. And this was the only way he can get it, was from putting on his other hat uh, as a prisoner's rights advocate. The story of me and the Woodlands 10 has got enough irony in it to rust. But that's only if you look at it objectively. If you actually lived it day for day, subjectively, like I did, it's only the right and reasonable thing to do. John Bice has been up for parole twice. Both times he was denied. But Ray Hill, the man behind the mic, remains undeterred in his crusade to free the unlikely protege he once fought to bring to justice. Thank you, folks. The prison show with Ray. That's the show.